Hey everyone, so I just want to do a really quick video where I explain to you three main reasons why I decided to make the switch from Adobe Illustrator to Affinity Designer. And uh, this isn't going to be like an in-depth video where I go through tool by tool and explain everything uh, because honestly I don't know Illustrator that in-depth. Um, but I have used it enough to know what I want and when I found these uh, these three features I thought damn this is this is a really great program I've got to do it so um, without further ado let's jump in um, I'm going to demonstrate them to you and yeah it's going to be really good okay so obviously the first reason why I switched is because it's a lot cheaper uh, Affinity Designer is a flat fee you don't have to pay a subscription cost and I think for the majority of users like Affinity Designer can do what you need it to do and uh, it's really hard to justify paying a monthly subscription fee for the extra features that Illustrator has. Uh, I think that Adobe is trying to, you know, um, convince people to switch because they include, you know, everything inside their package. You know, you've got Photoshop, you've got After Effects, you've got all the entire suite of different programs. But, you know, if you're just a casual user or if you have a very specific use case where you only need vectors or you only need like, yeah, you only need vectors, um, Affinity Designer is perfect for that and you only pay once and you're done. So uh, yeah, I don't really need to go into too much detail as to why that's amazing. It's pretty obvious. But let's get into the second reason, which uh, is in the program here. So I've got a new document open and obviously it looks like a standard program. Like you've got your typical toolbar here with uh, vector tools. But the interesting thing is up here, you've got these three icons and they represent personas. And it's almost like when you click on them, you can transform the program into another program. So for example, here is the designer persona, which is where you do everything related to vectors, but you can also switch to the pixel persona. And this is almost like turning it into a typical raster paint program like Photoshop. And you can see here that the toolbars have changed again. Uh, there's no longer any uh, vector tools there. It just looks like a typical paint program. So I can, uh, if I create a new layer, I should be able to paint on it. <laughs> there we go. An assistant has created a new raster layer inside the layer you previously had selected. Okay, cool. Thanks, assistant. Yeah, that's my artwork. Isn't it amazing? I'll try to... I'm using a mouse. That's my excuse. Uh, let's try to draw a little face. <laughs> oh, gosh. Can you believe I'm an artist? Uh, <laughs> let me try to draw like a, a side view of a face. Oh, my gosh. Okay. Cut. Here. Like Did you? Yeah. <laughs> there you go. So, um, but yeah, you get the idea, right? Like it's, it's really just a raster program. Like I can, I've got different brushes. I think, yeah, here we go. You know, you've got airbrushes, you've got, I don't know what these are. I haven't delved into like, how detailed the brushes are or how customizable they are but i'm assuming you sh you know like generally speaking if you have like the basic set of brushes you can achieve most things so yeah it's really amazing and then what happens is if i go back into my design persona the raster file stays there and it's like on a layer and then i can go in and create another layer where i can continue with my vector illustration so if i had vector elements they would play nicely and I could, um, I can, oh, here we go. This is interesting, convert to curves. And then I can move this around and continue drawing with vectors, which is amazing. Like it's like two programs in one. The other thing that I really like about this is, and it's hard to explain on camera, but when you're using it, like clicking around it just feels so much smoother, like grabbing the, the anchor points. And yeah, it's hard to explain, but the, the UI here is just a lot more modern than, than Illustrator. Illustrators is kind of old and pixelated. I think they hadn't updated it for, for Retina screens, but maybe it was because I was on an older version of Illustrator. But yeah, I just really love this UI and I love the feel of how anchor points behave. Um, and the other interesting thing is, so say if I create 
this one and yeah, there's a weird thing here where you have to convert to curves every time you create a shape, which is different to Illustrator. But um, yeah, if I so, so, so look at this, see when it's snapping, the snapping is amazing. Like see how it, it not only snaps to the position, but it'll show you like the geometry and how it lines up with uh, the geometry that you're snapping to. And it just feels so smooth and intuitive. Like, yeah. It's, it's amazing. You really have to try it out to understand the difference. And it's a big difference, especially if you're spending all day, you know, fiddling with anchor points. Uh, it, it's really helpful. So that's the first two reasons. The, the first reason was obviously price. The second reason was this raster vector, you know, persona switching. Uh, the third reason, and this is a killer feature as well, is uh, the grid tools. Normally in Illustrator, you can pull up a grid and grids are really useful for aligning things, obviously, but Affinity Designer's grid tools are next level. So you can see here, there's this tool panel called Isometric. And what I can do is I can go into grid settings and I can show grid and it shows me a fully isometric grid. And there's so many customizable options. I can choose diametric, what's that? Oh, interesting. Okay, so oblique, I can do trimetric left, trimetric, no, that was trimetric left, trimetric right, um, triangular, mm, that's interesting. Two axis column. Like before I had a finish design, I was trying to do some isometric art inside of Illustrator. And what I had to do was I had to draw up like a grid of vectors and then free transform those into the isometric uh, shape that I wanted. And yeah, obviously because they were vectors, I was just set with that. Like I couldn't, I didn't have the ability to just easily switch between all these different isometric views and know that like, you know, the, the software was looking after it rather than it being a piece of the artwork, if that makes sense. Um, but yeah, this is a game changer, especially if you're doing isometric art. So let me just show you how cool this grid is. Like I can go in, um, I can grab my shape from before and it will actually snap to the grid. And yeah, like it means you can get a really clean image and not have to worry so much about, you know, you can, it means you can focus more on the illustration and worry less about uh, getting everything aligned uh, to your grid. So another really cool thing you can do is uh, you can also change your current plane. So for example, here it says current plane, I'm on the top plane. I can also switch to the side plane. And now I, if I want to draw the other edge of this object, I can do so, so like this. And now I've got like the side of my box. And then if I wanted to complete that plane, I can switch to the front plane, create another face, that to curves. And now I can, oh, oops, didn't mean to do that. Um, let's just do this. Yep. Okay, cool. So if I just fill that with a different color, you know, fill this. I don't know. Yeah, I think that's really cool. Like it was so easy. I got that up and running within a couple minutes. And I know Illustrator has 3D tools and stuff like that, but I don't know. I didn't really want to mess with real 3D. I just wanted to be able to have an isometric plane and grid that I can uh, play with. And yeah, just the possibilities are limitless. Like, can you imagine like you're able to do like an isometric drawing like this, a vector drawing, and then also have, um, you know, raster elements on it. So, I, you know, this could be like a wall and then I could do graffiti on the wall, uh, something like that. It's really cool. And yeah, when I found this feature, I was like, I'm definitely getting this program. It's, it's incredible. Okay, so let's jump into one of my most recent illustrations so you can see how far you can kind of push this. So this is it. And if you've been following me on Instagram, you probably would have seen me post this or uh, if you saw my last week's video, it would be there. Yeah, if I choose show grid, you can actually see here how I've managed to do this illustration. So it's obviously like a mix of freehand, freeform drawing, but then it's also um, following the grid to give structure and dynamism to the, the image. Uh, and 
yeah, it's just a really incredible uh, feature of the program. And this is one of those situations where it's like, I know people say like, whatever you create is about your own personal ability and not about the tools. You shouldn't rely on tools, uh, but tools can also be an enabler. And this really does enable like a new type of art to be created. And I was really excited when I found it. So those are the three main reasons why I switched. Uh, actually, well, four-ish, I guess. So number one, obviously, is price. Number two is the different personas, vectors, and pixels. Uh, number three is uh, the snapping between anchor points is just super smooth, and it's a really modern UI. And finally, obviously, is this isometric grid tools and just all the different features they have. Like, they've really built out this functionality, and they've really thought it through. I think what the company's really benefited from is having a clean slate and being able to brainstorm what features are most important and focus on those and bring them up. Uh, but it looks like Affinity Designer, they're really on top of their game and uh, they know what the users want. So uh, great stuff and I really kind of recommend it enough. So that's it for this video. <laughs> Thanks guys for watching. And yeah, if you have any questions or comments, leave them in the description below. Uh, if this video was helpful, also please remember to give me a like or um, also subscribe or hit the notification bell. It, everything really helps out the channel. So yeah. Uh, thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video.